Welcome to Poetry and Poets with Sue Ann Stradling Collins, the director of the Apache County Library District. Today we're going to talk about the sonnet and a little bit about William Shakespeare. A sonnet is a 14 line poem with a definite rhyme scheme, but there are various rhyme schemes and we'll be talking about those. Sonnets basically focus on one idea, mainly love poems. Um, in modern world, sonnets have been written about everything. <laughs> and the form has been imitated and dissected and played with. And so the sonnet does a lot. Sonnets are extremely old. Uh, Petrarch was one of the first to write sonnets and he was born in 1300. He's an Italian poet. And so the sonnet goes back to the 1300s. Um, rhyme schemes are marked by the alphabet. And so hopefully you can see this. Off to the side you have AA, well in this case you don't have AA. You have ABBA, ABBA, CD, CD, CD in this case. A Petrarchian sonnet can also have CDE, CDE on the last six. And so the rhyme scheme is what defines what kind of sonnet you have. And so that's how we know if it's Petrarchian, whether Petrarch wrote it or not. It's the rhyme scheme that defines the type of poem that you have. This poem actually is by Elizabeth Barrett Browning, and it's one that you've probably heard of before. It's called How Do I Love Thee? So I'll read this one to you. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach when feeling out of sight for the ends of being and ideal grace. I love thee to the level of every day's most quiet need. By sun and candlelight, I love thee freely as men strive for right. I love thee purely as they turn from praise. I love thee with the passion put to use in my old griefs and with my childhood's faith. I love thee with the love I seem to lose with my lost saints. I love thee with the breath, smile, tears of all my life. And if God choose, I shall but love thee better after death. Most sonnets are divided into a four-line quatrain, a four-line quatrain, and another four-line quatrain, or often they will be um, six and six and two is kind of how the, the feeling breaks up. But usually the last two lines give you that meaning. And so here, as you can see, um, and if God choose, I shall but love thee better after death. How do I love thee? I'll love thee forever. And so the message usually comes in those last two lines of that poem that they're giving you that final thought. So that's a Petrarchan sonnet. The next one is the Spencerian sonnet. And Edmund Spencer uh, was writing in the 1500s. Okay, so again, quite an old form here. I don't remember which one I chose of his, but I do have to use this. The rhyme scheme for the Spencerian sonnet is a little bit different. You've got A, B, A, B, B, C, B, C, C, D, C, D, E, E. Okay? And that can be, that can be moved, that can be played with. Okay? But that's generally what the Spencerian sonnet looks like. Okay, this is sonnet 75. Most sonnets have numbers as uh, most poets who were writing sonnets wrote these in sequences. Okay, one day I wrote her name upon the strand, but came the waves and washed it away. Again, I wrote it with a second hand, but came the tide and made my pains his prey. Vain man, said she, that dost in vain assay a mortal thing so to immortalize, for I myself shall like to this decay, and eke my name be wiped out likewise. Not so, quote I, let baser things devise to die in dust, but you shall live by fame. My verse, your virtues rare shall eternalize, and in the heavens write your glorious name. Where, when as death shall all the world subdue, our love shall live, and later life renew. Okay, of course the message, he writes her name on the sand, it gets washed away, and he says, well, because I've written this poem, the fame that it's going to give you, our love will last, because I've written these lines for you. 
Of course, probably the sonnet that most people have heard of are the Shakespearean sonnets. And I want to pause for a moment and talk about Shakespeare. Shakespeare was born in 1564 in Stratford-on-Avon. Um, he was baptized, we know, we have record that he was baptized on April 26th. We don't have a birth record for him, but traditionally children were baptized three days after their birth. So generally everyone believes that Shakespeare was born on the 23rd of April. That's one of the reasons we're talking about Shakespeare today because his birthday is coming very quickly uh, this week. We do know for sure that he did die on April 23rd in 1660. And so we do have a definite death, death date. So did he die on his birthday? We like to think so. We don't know that that's exactly true. Um, one of the things I just wanted to point out was that he married a woman named Anne Hathaway, and he had three children. Um, I don't know how many people know that he did have children. A daughter named Susanna, and then he had a set of twins, Judith and Hamnet. And uh, there is a current book out called Hamnet that is fictionalized. It's a novel talking about his son and a supposed story about his son who's almost been forgotten. Uh, his children are not often mentioned. And of course, Shakespeare, best known for his plays, he wrote 39 of those. Sonnets, he wrote 154, and so quite a few sonnets. Um, the other thing to think about with Shakespeare is that his plays are written in verse, and so almost every part of what he wrote is poetry. Um, he used something called iambic pentameter. Um, an iamb is an unstressed stressed syllable. And iambic pentameter is close to the way we speak anyway. It's a ta-da, 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 ta-da. And our language falls into those rhythms quite often and quite easily. Just an example, this is from um, Romeo and Juliet. But soft, what light through yonder window breaks. You hear it. We don't read it that way, but it does have that rhythm, that iambic pentameter. So if you hear of iambic pentameter, the majority of Shakespeare's plays are written in iambic pentameter, and many of his sonnets are also. The sonnet I've chosen for Shakespeare, first off, his rhyme scheme, he decided that he wanted more rhymes in what he had to write. So the other two uh, sonnets that I showed you, end with either a D or an E, meaning there were five rhymes. He wanted to go further, and so his poems end all the way on G. And so you go on down and you get seven rhymes in his. A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, G, G. And those are Shakespeare sonnets, okay? This is one you may not have heard of before, what I like about this one. Um, it was written to a supposed dark lady, did he have an affair with her? They don't know, those kind of things. But what I like about it, he's talking about the fact that she's not the traditional beauty of that day, and yet he loves her just as much. But he says that, you know, she's heavy. <laughs> she doesn't tread lightly. She has bad breath, according to him. Her breath reeks. And yet, when we get to the last two lines, you'll see what he has to say about her in the end. So this is Sonnet 130. My mistress' eyes are nothing like the sun. Coral is far more red than her lips. If snow be white, then her breasts are done. If hairs be wires, black wires grow on her head. I have seen roses damasked, red and white, but no such roses see I in her cheeks. And in some perfumes is there more delight than in the breath that from my mistress reeks. I love to hear her speak, yet well I know that music hath a far more pleasing sound. I grant I never saw a goddess go. My mistress, when she walks, treads on the ground. And yet by heaven, I think my love is rare, as any she be lied with false compare. So, I just think it's a nice twist. We think that most sonnets are love poems, and this is indeed, but more of a reality check, I think, for today's women. And I like that Shakespeare did that. Shakespeare is wonderful. If you haven't ever watched one of the movies where they're keeping two, that they're not, I don't care where they change the setting, but as long as they keep the same lines, you'll hear the beauty of his language and the amazing stories that he told. So if you haven't ever spent time with Shakespeare, it is well worth your time to do so. 
to see what's out there. If you ever get to see a play of Shakespeare's, again, it's worth the money and the time. So celebrate his birthday on the 23rd, and um, we hope that you will like our page and continue to follow us, and we'll see you soon.